Welcome back to Hand of Fate. She waits for you, even now. We just got done with an endless mode run with Explorer's Gift. It's time to go on with the story. Specifically, to the Queen of Skulls. Queen of Skulls? I mean, she's a skeleton. She will be weak to maces. And the curses are a little bit interesting in that they're going to interact with our fate. There are two other fates that have been voted on by the thread. Let me pull my notes up. We had the Nomad and Merchant Guard. Nomad was the second most popular choice after soldiers training, which we just completed. So let's go ahead and give Nomad a shot. Now, Nomad is interesting because you can only keep one piece of equipment at a time, any extra equipment. So Get. much death and sorrow in the world. Can you hear the winds keening in loss? Can you hear the dirges as the trees and the earth cry out in sorrow? This is the Queen of Skulls, and that is all she can hear. It has driven her to madness. Her touch is the promise of death, and I say to you, you were warned. Farewell. Sorry about that, dealer. I've already preset some encounters here. Though I may go back on some stuff I did. Undead Bane. We haven't seen it yet, but the name and also Scorching Zeal being a mace sound fantastic right now. I think I want to put Desperate Measures back in, actually. Especially with Undead. Encounters. I removed a bunch of encounters that we've already seen before for a variety. And you can see we have a whole lot of new ones to play with as well as some old ones that need to be worked on. I also want to issue a correction from the Endless Mode video, in which I said, paying the 50 gold to deal with the rat men was the process to unlock them from the deck. Uh, that's my mistake. They are already unlocked from the deck. I've removed them. I don't want to hunt rat men right now, as nice as they are. We have plenty of other things to worry about. Not all cards here are going to be useful, but mainly I wanted to make sure these are in. Landlocked Lumber is a DLC quest that is locked, as is the Lich that found its way in here thanks to one of our previous encounters. If the Lich comes up, we'll see what's that. Finally, the Fate. So I was saying, the Nomad has an interesting mechanic. Cannot carry extra equipment. Equipment that would normally go to your inventory is automatically sold. This uh, can get interesting if you have things that can take your equipment, as we saw previously. And the Nomad has the starting helm, which we'll see called the Nomadic Helm which reduces damage from starvation while you have no unequipped items. In essence, the Nomad is a way to try to get by with little means, as the name implies, and not having food is not the end of the world if you can get healing. We'll see how that works. Maybe this will be the first story death of the run. I've been extraordinarily lucky so far. Make your decisions wisely. And if you stay on these screens for long enough, I haven't showed it off yet, the dealer has a few comments. This is probably not a wise decision. But we're going to do it nonetheless. The lands of the Queen of Skulls are unhealthy for the living. Our deck is getting pretty significant here. 
few have reached the depths of the game that you have attained. They were too weak or too inflexible, too passionate or lacking in the necessary will. You are different. Well, I have an audience. All right, our first choice, Berserker Armor. As much as I would love Berserker Armor because I tend to get hit, we're getting to the point where I am worried about actually, I, I just don't want to take damage anymore. I don't know how much my health is going to go down and I don't know whether I'm going to be really food constrained. I think. Are you sure that's the right approach? We're just going to go medium. And I already have gold. And just to confirm. Yep. Items. Gain a curse. Don't quite remember if that deals with food. We'll probably see that. Ah, uh, the nomadic helm. I could replace it, but given our constraints, uh, this is probably a good thing to keep on. Shield. Trinkets will always be on. Ring of Hindsight, another correction. Uh, I didn't make this explicit in the Endless Mode video, but Ring of Hindsight starts to just appear in play when you get the Scepter. Very useful. Not related to the Explorer's Gift, but synergizes nicely. An axe, which we'll want to replace with a mace soon. And let's continue. Evil made flesh, but with no craft or substance. Powerful magic, but unfocused. A choice. Uh, I Select hate these. Desire. Oh dear. Okay, well that was bad. Uh, we immediately lost our axe. Thankfully there is a default weapon, the rusty axe. But I'm not looking forward to this run. Of course, so few trade in the land of death that deals are easy to strike. Life slim, curse of weakening. Bashing ring. Ah, Scorching Zeal. Scorching Zeal is also a nice mace. Desperate measures might synergize well with the Nomad, but Scorching Zeal definitely is nice, especially with its effect. But I don't want to gain too many curses yet. Let's just try buying food. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Confirming. No new curses. Well, good news, everybody. Um, buying food with a nomad. Sorry, buying food in this dungeon will not curse you, which is good. I'm going to see how well I can do. The cities hold no darkness like that to be found in the wilderness on a still and moonless night. Stranger in the Shadows unlocked our stuff already. Sorry, we unlocked the card for Stranger in the Shadows uh, next encounter already. The token's gone. But we can always make money. And we have food. The first hit's free, the second hit's not. Maybe not so wise to keep going.
Ugh. That's rough. Well, at least you gave him a story to tell. They like nothing better, I hear. Turns out, running away in the name of love doesn't always work out. Who knew? Let's give him some money. The pendulum can swing both ways. horse is a fine companion. I'm sure you'll leave this one in time. You do not seem to have the temperament for friends, even in the animal kingdom. I did not create this game, you know. I have merely perfected it. You have begun to understand my innovations. Marketplace has a few different ways of ending and a few different encounter modifiers. This one lets us get food. Leaving will do nothing. Healing food has a small chance. But gold might be less useful here. We get the token for participating. And thankfully, we actually get food out of it. Again, we are an adventure. We help. There's really no reason not to complete this now, unless we could see the map. But we're not that lucky yet, and our food is not in a great situation. So let's just do it. Two of skulls should be fairly easy. Ah, but what's this? There is a wrinkle in this map. If you remember the Jack of Skulls, he was able to revive some of the skeletons. And while these skeletons won't be revived, as long as the totems are up, as long as the totems are up, we will get new skeletons in the mix. So we want to take care of these as soon as possible. Fortunately, they're not too strong.
The skeletons are still not the strongest of enemies. I would still love a mace. But I can deal with this map. Well, whatever was under these was not the exit. And we're right in thick of it now. Scraps left. I will happily wager on the outcome. I do not think you have what it takes. Let's find out a bit more first. now skeletons. This one's escalating. Slowly but surely. Oh, the lich is up there. Well, we've avoided the lich for now. We'll probably see it another time. A permanent discount for those willing to endure the local color. A chance to buy more food. You must be relieved. Somewhat, yes. But there's not much that I can sell. Unless I want to get rid of the Ring of Hindsight. Ah, even then that's not much. From now on, you'll be taking damage. Unless you can find more food, of course. We flee into all sorts of vices, do we not? All in the hope that we will forget. This is an unfortunate layout. At least we know. The Dark Dweller, I can't do anything about. Noble Trader, I don't have any weapon to sell. And the Holy Forge requires the special ore encounter, and local peasant requires food. Well, we know it's going to be awful. With any luck, the Dark Dweller is behind us. I don't expect it is. But I have no food for the woman. I would feed you if I could. I cannot break the rules in your favor any more than in my own. I am not surprised they have difficulty selling their wares here. Yeah, minus seven. We're not taking full damage, which is good. Nobleman, we have no gold and... Well, how about that? That was lucky. I hear nothing but the sounds of morning. She is close. Which could be lucky for us. 
This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. Hey, welcome back to the carnival. Let's see what the Devil's Carnival gives us this time. Good so far. I honestly don't know if I'm able to track the card. It seemed like that was the right position, but the game is pretty coy about anything that's not on top. Well, how about that, everybody? Two huge successes. That is the best possible outcome. Let's see what we get out of it. The gods look upon you favorably. Now, if there were lizardmen here, that would be fantastic, but I'm not holding my breath. Devil's Carnival is one of those cards that can keep on giving. Not bad to have it in your deck. You can get some pretty good things as long as you know you'll get a good outcome. But getting a good outcome is hard. Now you have reached a point from which the path ahead is unclear. What will be your solution? Now lost in the desert. That's going to be fun. There's a token in it for you, if you win. Two options here, and both of them give you the chance at getting the card's token. Praying to the old gods can be beneficial, but I want to wander aimlessly instead. Because the successes. Choose from these options. Ah, well... No, that, that's not what I wanted. Oh. Well, I could have lost food, but I had no food. Huge failure on wandering aimlessly will do that. Successes. Well, a huge success could have gotten me food. There you go. Amusingly enough, the Nomad does travel the desert better. Let's clear out these enemies and just handle them. This video, uh, this combat, I'm not speeding up because you might notice I'm starting to play a little bit differently. I'm still not the best at combat. But I need to play a little bit more conservatively, especially with all the different attacks that can come at me. The different ways that the Ratmen can uh, arrange attacks. I absolutely do not want to be hit by their triple attack. And I do not want an unblockable attack to get at me. I have limited health, and being more careful is definitely to my advantage here. Finishers are hard to do in large groups. So dodging, dodging, and dodging, and being good at parrying is the name of the game. Thankfully, in my position with no food, not taking much damage from this fight is to my advantage, because I still get a gain. 
I don't get the card's token though. But still, a net positive. Nothing to trade yet. Can you walk in the shadows and seek the light? And I feel like I want something here. Let's see if I can steal. A little gold to give you a taste for it. Beautiful. Should I? I could go straight to the shop and get some food right now. Let's. Finally, an opportunity to eat. Life slim. Spiritual healing. Not necessarily going to get much healing. I do want this. I don't expect to have enough money, sorry, enough food to reliably explore everything. Because I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I find more food, that'll be good. There's no guarantee. But being a nomad, I should still enter the final combat with enough food. Ah, and here we go. The Nomad's Desert. Win this and claim my token. Our fate dictates that we travel in a certain direction. This is not random. There is an actual correct path. So if you don't want to know the correct path, skip ahead in the video. You could just wander aimlessly. And if you do the wrong choice, at least in the first one, you will go ahead and essentially move back to another tile. For now, let's do the correct path and clear this encounter. We start by going south. We continue east. and lose some health. We go east again. And consume food. We also regain some health out of it, thankfully. The fourth, we go south. I am sorry and get cursed. Finally, one last time south. Amusingly, the Rat Cleaver, although it's an anti-rat weapon, is far better than what we have now. And even though the Rusty Axe is a default equipment item, you can still sell it. Albeit for nothing. Worth it. And now we can continue with, on with the Nomad. Mind you... This encounter seems kind of um, 
unfair. I had to look up the I had to look up the actual directions to go, as otherwise I would not have been able to complete that. I should have gone to the shop last. And I have no gold for you. I am so sorry. The life of the nomad is hard. Pitiful. Face death and learn your fate. There we go. The Queen of Skulls. Powerful skeleton warrior. The summoned a demonic pile of skulls that can create a legion of skeletons. Spoilers, we saw that in the White Council encounter. A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. Let's take her down. Unlike the Jack, she's ready with ranged. If I can, I want to clear the room a little bit here. We're safe behind the sarcophagus there. Oh no. There are traps. Fantastic if I can lure the enemies. In. Oh, and she's got grenades. We haven't seen those yet, so it caught me a little bit by surprise. And it's times like these where I'm really glad the game decided to put an off-screen, you know, a little off-screen indicator for enemies that are about to attack you. Because in certain enemies, sorry, in certain video games, you will not have enemies attacking you from off screen. Kind of a principle of if you can't see it, it's not after you. This game is not that nice, at least for ranged enemies. Skeletons are still frail, so I can take them down without too much difficulty, even though I am getting hit. I can interrupt some of the Queen's attacks here. And even her unblockable melee attack that she has is minor. We finish, as the Nomad, without too much pain. Then it is done. When even a creature as haunting as the Queen of Skulls perishes, we know the game is almost done. The Kings are gathering now. Do you see now what I have built? How elegantly all the pieces fit. Let's take a look at our spoils. The Lonely Bard finishes the quest line, and we get a new shield. dealer i think we'll stop here for now but before i sign off it's kind of interesting how the game has structured its dungeons although the layout was a little bit more complicated in this one there were definitely it felt like there were fewer floors than in past dungeons 
the second set of three court cards before the scepter had some pretty long ones, but in this case, each floor felt longer or more dangerous. But not too many floors were there. It's an interesting balancing act on the part of the developers, and I do appreciate when it happens. It was very good, especially since I was running out of food there. But being a nomad, it didn't hurt me too much. But that's enough for this dungeon. So I'll see you next time on Hand of Fate.